Hey, it's Dr. Nussi, and in this one I want to try to answer the question, how long does weed, THC, marijuana stay in your system and can be detected on a urinalysis if you are a moderate user? And right away, so I don't waste anyone's time, I'm going to define what a moderate user is. So for the purpose of this video, a moderate user is going to be anyone that uses THC marijuana more than two times per month up to two times per week. So if you use less frequently than that or more frequently than that, then this is not the video for you. Check out my other videos on either light users or heavy users. And I'm also gonna put chapter links in the description box below so you can skip ahead to the testing times if you like, but I would highly recommend not skipping ahead until I explain the variables that are going to help determine the testing times. All right, and just to be doubly clear, this video is about detection times times in a urinalysis. I've done previous videos on saliva testing, blood testing, hair testing. If you're interested in anything other than the urine test and detection times for a urinalysis, please see one of those other videos. All right, so before I get all the way into it, if you could please just take one second to go down, click the like button. I'm trying to get this information out to as many people as possible. And clicking that thumbs up, that like button, really helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people so they become informed as well. And if you are interested in drug testing related videos, pre-employment medical videos and updates, please stay subscribed to this channel whenever an update comes down from the F FMCSA or the federal government, I make an update video. All right, so today I'm gonna to give you my best estimate for how long THC marijuana can be detected in a urinalysis, but please be aware that this is my best estimate and there is no way for me to give you exact testing times. So use this as information only, and as always, the best way to know if you are going to pass a drug test is to home test several times leading up to that official test. And I will leave a link in the description box below for my preferred home drug test. All right, and first, let me show you this chart directly from the federal government, and it shows both saliva and urine testing time windows. And if you look down at the marijuana section, you can see that in a urinalysis, marijuana can be detected for as little as three days all the way up to over two months. And there have been reports of individuals testing way longer than two months, but these are generally outlier cases. So how long THC marijuana is detectable on a urinalysis is dependent on a few different factors. How heavy, how frequently you use, your body fat percentage, how much body fat you are carrying around, and to a degree, your activity level. So in this video, we need to break individuals up into different groups based on their activity level, their body fat percentage, and how frequently they use. All right, so there are five different moderate user types. The moderate user that is overweight and inactive, so no exercise, not the healthiest diet. And again, by overweight, I mean a high body fat percentage, so you may wanna use a body fat percentage scale to determine this. Number two is the moderate user that's overweight but active, so exercises, maybe tries to eat healthy. And again, regular sustained exercise should help clear you of THC a little quicker, but I highly recommend not beginning an exercise program just before a drug test, and I've done a full video on why this is. Number three is the moderate user that's normal weight but inactive. Number four is the moderate user that's normal weight and exercises, and number five is the moderate user that's fit and exercises often. All right, so now we've gotta talk some science, and these are facts that are going to be true for all user types. So when you smoke a joint or have about that much marijuana enter your system, your urine THC level will very quickly raise to 180 nanograms per milliliter. And I will link below the study where I'm getting this information. Since most urine tests look for a cutoff of 50 nanograms per milliliter, you will immediately test positive. Now, the THC half-life, that is the amount of time for the concentration to be cut in half varies based on how heavy of a user you are, from one and a half days 
all the way up to seven days, depending on if you are a light, a moderate, or a heavy user. And this will be used in part to determine how long you will test positive. So to get under 50 nanograms per milliliter, in this case, you will need to take 180 divided by two gets you to 90 nanograms per milliliter, but that still will make you test positive. So you have to divide that in half again to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. And that will take between three and 14 days, depending on, again, if you are a light, moderate, or a heavy user. And remember, because THC is fat soluble, it can be absorbed by body fat. So the more body fat you have, the more likely you are to be able to re-release THC in concentrations high enough for you to test positive for a longer period from when you stopped using. All right, so now I'm going to go through each different user type and give you my prediction for how long THC marijuana will be detectable on a urinalysis in each individual case. So once you know what type of user you are, feel free then to skip ahead to that section of the video. So first up is the moderate user that's overweight and inactive. So Jordan smokes on the weekends only. He has struggled with weight issues his whole life and isn't a big fan of exercise. He's five foot eight and 220 pounds. So this type of user will not metabolize marijuana as quickly as a light user. And they still have the issue of a significant amount of fat tissue storing and re-releasing THC after stopping use. So the half-life estimate for a moderate user is about four days. So that means that 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose divided in half equals 90. That's in four days. And then you have to divide that 90 and half again to get under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. That takes another four days. So eight days in total to metabolize what was initially metabolized after stopping use. But his fat tissue will store and re-release THC. And with the longer half-life for this re-released THC, it will take longer to metabolize this as well. So I would estimate that Jordan will test positive for just over one month after stopping use. So next up is the moderate user that's overweight but has the slight advantage of exercise. So Ronnie smokes one time per week. He has been overweight his whole adult life, but for the past six months, he's been exercising regularly to try to get healthy. He's five foot 10 and 210 pounds. So a moderate user that is active is going to potentially be metabolizing body fat more regularly and therefore, in theory, should be able to test clean in a slightly shorter period of time. So remember the half-life calculation, 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose, we have to divide that in half to get the 90, then we have to divide that in half again to get to 45 under the limit, and that takes about eight days. But body fat will be releasing THC into the bloodstream long after that. The exercise will mitigate this slightly, so I would estimate that Ronnie will test clean in about a month. Next up is the moderate user that's normal weight but inactive. So Tom smokes about four times per month. He doesn't get much exercise. He's six foot two and 190 pounds. So for this type of user, we don't need to worry as much about the long-term release of THC from fat tissue, but it still will be a factor. The half-life calculation again, 180 nanograms per milliliter divided by two to get the 90 nanograms per milliliter, divide that in two again to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanograms per milliliter cutoff. Takes about eight days to metabolize all the THC from the initial use, but some body fat will continue to store and release THC in the following days or potentially weeks. So for Tom, I would estimate he could test clean at about a month after stopping use. All right, next up, the moderate user that's normal weight 
and has the advantage of exercise. So Gina only uses on Fridays when she gets off from work. She also tries to get to the gym three to four times per week. She's five foot five, 145 pounds. So for this user, we have the advantage of exercising to hopefully speed up the metabolism of fat and detox quicker. Real quick, the half-life calculation, 180 nanograms per milliliter, that initial dose, we have to divide that in half to get the 90, but we have to divide that in half again to get under the limit, so 45. So that takes about eight days to metabolize, but some fat will store and release THC later, but hopefully that happens quicker due to the exercise. So in Gina's case, I would estimate that after she stops using, she will test negative in just under a month. And finally, the moderate user that is fit and active. So Stan smokes only on occasion when he feels particularly stressed, maybe two times per week. He's an avid cyclist. He's five foot 10 and 160 pounds of lean muscle. So having a low body fat percentage is very advantageous. Scientifically, THC should be under the 50 nanogram per milliliter testing cutoff in about eight days because he is a moderate user. The half-life of THC in a moderate user, again, being four days. So 180 nanograms per milliliter is the urine THC levels immediately after use. If you divide that in half to get the 90, that takes four days. You have to divide that 90 again in half to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff, and that takes eight days. Even the fittest individual has a certain percentage of body fat, which will still store and release THC in the coming days. So for Stan, I would estimate that he would test clean after stopping use in under three weeks. And that's it, short and sweet. I hope this video was helpful, useful, and informative. Stay subscribed here. And until next time, everybody, stay safe.